Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiology consultant in York Hospital. And uh, today I thought I'd do a video on the subject of the broken heart syndrome. Um, and there are two reasons for this um, video. Um, the first is because it was requested by Cassie Bell. So um, Cassie, this is for you. And the second reason is that uh, more recently I've become part of some Facebook groups uh, where I see a lot of anxiety and anxiety can be a really bad thing uh, and it can manifest in lots of different ways uh, to the detriment of the person and in particular it can affect the heart in a bad way and today I wanted to talk to you about this thing called um, <clears throat> the broken heart syndrome okay so what is the broken heart syndrome we often read that people died of a broken heart you know what does that mean um, one of my favorite movies is a James Bond movie called Live and Let Die, and, uh, and this dealt with the subject of voodooism. And uh, you see in the movie that there, uh, there is um, uh, 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 voodooism being practiced, and they have this dance, uh, ritual dance, and um, during the dance, people get so anxious and they get almost possessed and then they drop down dead and we know this we know that what happens is certainly in areas in africa and and in the caribbean uh where voodooism be, is being practiced you can get such a surge of anxiety and fear um during these uh, rituals uh that there is such a surge of release of hormones that the heart can temporarily be paralyzed and when it does so it can fail and that can suddenly lead to death okay so it is something that we have seen in um you know in movies etc um and we are beginning to see this kind of condition more often now in uh, medical practice so what tends to happen is this that usually this is a condition which affects mainly women rather than men uh, only 10% of the cases we see are men, the majority are women, the majority are older women above the age of 50. And what tends to happen is that there may be some kind of event which causes extreme anxiety and extreme stress. So it could be the death of a loved one, it could be a marital breakup, it could be a robbery or something like that. And because of this extreme anxiety, what happens is that there's a sudden release of um, important hormones, particularly hormones called catecholamines, of which adrenaline is one. And these hormones in excess have this effect of actually temporarily paralyzing the heart. And so often what tends to happen is that the patient will experience sudden chest discomfort or become profoundly breathless minutes or hours after a very stressful event. And, um, they they became they become extremely unwell they they get severe chest pain they come into hospital and to all intents and purposes they're told that they're having a heart attack and usually there will be some release of um, the uh, muscle of the heart muscle enzymes the ones that indicate damage to the heart into the bloodstream so when the doctor comes and measures the bloods they'll say oh your blood tests are elevated you've had a heart attack um and uh, and often uh, the ecg the uh, tracing of the heart will also show um, abnormalities in the heart rhythm uh, or, or also just show changes which would be consistent with a heart attack. So all, to all intents and purposes, it seems like a heart attack. Then, however, when you actually look into the heart arteries to see if there's been a sudden blockage because a heart attack is, to all intents and purposes, blockage of the blood getting to the heart. So that you, you have to have a blocked heart artery to diagnose a heart attack um, although in a small uh, set of cases you can have it without but usually you need to have a blocked vessel or a narrowed vessel um, so when a person comes in with this broken heart syndrome to all intents and purposes they're thought to have a heart attack however when they have an angiogram a delineation of the heart arteries they're paradoxically found to have normal heart arteries and that then leads the clinician to start thinking about this condition called the broken heart syndrome. It has a very typical appearance when you do a heart scan, when you do an ultrasound of the heart, in that what we find is whereas the heart usually 
um, does this. In a broken heart syndrome, you find that the whole of the bottom of the heart doesn't do anything, and it's only the top bit that's doing something. So you get this appearance where the top bit of the heart is contracting, but the whole of the bottom bit is not doing anything. Okay, um, And if you do an MRI scan on these patients, you normally find that there is no scar. Okay, So it's not damage, it's more a paralysis. It's not, it's not an acute injury as such, it's more a stunning of the heart muscle. Um, this is also described as a Takatsubo uh, cardiomyopathy, um, and Takatsubo is basically a Japanese term and refers to an oyster, refers to an octopus catcher, I think. It's an octopus catcher. So basically, you have these ceramic pots that fishermen put out, and they have a narrow neck and a wide base, and the octopus gets in but can't get out, and therefore they're called. And, they, and and this is what the heart looks like on the scan, and that's a tradition. That's a very typical appearance of something called Takatsubo's uh, or of broken heart syndrome. You can also get it in people who've had uh, um, an infection, a bad infection, or who have been admitted to intensive care unit. The, so during that time, when the heart is stunned like that you can get all, a manner of problems. You can go into heart failure, you can get heart rhythm disturbances, and you need that support. And usually what you need is medications to try and keep the heart supported. That involves being on things called beta blockers, which stop the heart or which make the heart less sensitive to catecholamines, and also um, uh, ACE inhibitors, which help strengthen the heart up. The good news is that if you support the heart during that phase, then in about three months' time, the heart recovers. And uh, from the majority of patients, they don't have a recurrence, although in about 5% of patients, you can get another episode later on. Um, and this is usually in response to sudden acute stress. It's not so much in response to chronic anxiety or chronic stress. Um, and and that's what um, that's what uh, uh, stress induced cardiomyopathy is. Of course, if the heart is immediately very stunned, you can develop heart rhythm disturbances at that time because the heart is very weak, it's very irritable, and it can lead to death sometimes. And that's why people used to die of broken heart syndrome. Um, now you know you come to hospital, you get given these medications, and they generally work very well not only in stopping complications from happening at the time, but also helping the heart recover. And usually in about three months time, the heart recovers back to normal function. So I hope this was useful. Cassie, this is for you. I hope you, um, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I think it's really important. I am overwhelmed by the number of people I've met who have anxiety. And I really think anxiety is not a good thing to have. It is not good to spend your life in fear all the time, because apart from just making you fearful and therefore depriving you of a good quality of life, it can also have a bad effect on the heart. It can be hugely inflammatory to the heart and all these hormones which are released as a result of what the mind is thinking can have deleterious effects on the body. So please guys, try and work on your anxiety. Please try and work on your fear. Um, and uh, I wish you all the best. So um, um, if you need to get in touch with me, you can do so. Um, on my website, uh, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Alternatively, you can contact me through Facebook, uh, and my Facebook ID is Your Cardiology, or Twitter. So I hope this was useful, and um, I wish you all the best. Thanks.